To thee we come, O Lord, our God. Sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And please now make an examination of your conscience. For your penance, for the confession that you have made, I ask that for the next three nights to remember your evening prayers and also to reflect upon the readings as prescribed by the church for this Quinquagesima Sunday. And now let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed. By my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. I cry aloud to God, cry to God to hear me. On the day of my distress, I seek the Lord. By night my hands are raised unceasingly. I refuse to be the soul. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, Lord God, and Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you care for us above all other creatures. Free us from all anxiety and turmoil of heart that we may seek first your kingdom and submit to your reign. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Vincent, will you proclaim today's word? Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget her infant? Be without tenderness for the child of her womb? Even should she forget, I will never forget you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The gradual. For a brief moment, I abandoned you. But with great tenderness, I will take you back. In the of breath, for a moment I might be able to chase from you. But with enduring love, I take pity on you. So the Lord will Okay. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul, the Apostle to the Corinthians. <clears throat> it is actually reported that there is immorality among you and of a kind that is not found even among the pagans. For a man is living with his father's wife, and you are arrogant. Ought you not rather to mourn? <clears throat> Let him who has done this be removed from among you. <clears throat> For although absent in body, I am present in spirit. And as if present, I have already pronounced judgment in the name of the Lord Jesus on the man who has done such a thing. When you are assembled and my spirit is present, with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to, live, to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Because he is found by those who test him not. And he has himself to those who do not disbelieve him. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. You, Jesus said to his disciples, No one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap. They gather nothing into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you more important than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single moment to your lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothes? Look from the way the wildflowers grow, they do not work or spin. But I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was clothed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass of the field, which grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you? 
O oh, you of little faith. So do not worry and say, what are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. The Gospel of the Lord. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. And again. And Jesus taught them. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in worldliness. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers in Christ. There's not that much of a difference between the day that Jesus taught the multitudes, which we know as the Sermon of the Mount, or what he is teaching us today. They say that the universal truths are truly universal, and it does not change, but rather our blessed Lord and Savior calls upon each of us to change. This coming Wednesday, the church will enter into the season of Lent. For the past three weeks, the season of pre-Lent, the teachings of Jesus, as found on the Sermon of the Mount, were delivered to congregations around the world. The universal truth that Jesus speaks about today is that we belong to God. You know, I usually get up in the morning and I try to look at the news on the computer. One thing that I caught today is that in Virginia, the ACLU was very happy because of the power of free speech, an elementary school in Virginia held its first satanic meeting. Where is our world truly going? Where do we become without God? Jesus wanted to impress upon his hearers the importance 
that everything that we have and everything that we are and ever will be belongs to God. Can you think of one thing that truly belongs to you? You know, we, we struggle for the days that we are put on earth and not every single day is the best day that we would like to have. And Jesus told us that days will be seasoned with suffering and misery. <coughs> but that it is important that we understand the authorship of our life and that being God. I had a dear friend of mine that told me many years at a funeral, he said, you know, Father, everything that we as people try to accumulate, that in the end we can take nothing back with us. In the world we came naked, and basically when we die, we give ourselves unto the Lord through our faith. Jesus wanted to point out the importance of this by saying that no man can serve two masters. If we look at the Greek, it kind of changes a little bit in its understanding in that it says that no man can be owned by two masters or two owners. In Jesus' day, the first fact remains is that a slave had nothing. Maybe the clothes on his back, but he didn't have possessions. He didn't even have a right to speak. He was owned. And the second truth is that a slave had no time for themselves. They were owned by their master, their owner, who could not only sell them, beat them, even kill them without being held liable for their slave. You know, our blessed Lord tells us that he came into the world so that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. He gave us an understanding of life in the realm of God the Creator. No man can serve two masters. You can't serve God and you can't serve mammon. Now mammon is a Jewish word that means possessions. And as I had asked in the beginning, is there anything that we truly own ourselves? Think about life itself. You have no control over that. You know, God gives us the ability to be able to work without health. We could not work. We could not provide. And so people strive on a daily basis to try to make themselves better. But when we stop to think about it, look at what happens in our world, in our society, when people feel they have no need for a God. They have no need for prayer. They have no need for faith. Jesus came to confirm and to affirm to all his healers, hearers, the importance of the authorship of God. Today's gospel speaks about how people are worried about what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, what they're going to wear. But what does Jesus say before all else? Seek the kingdom of God. Seek God's presence within your life. Everything will be added. 
I think there are people that I've met, I shouldn't say I think, I know of people that I've met over the years. And there seems to be a common thread that in the end, God provides. When we don't think that God is in our lives, every once in a while I'll use the term and describe that God has a way of tapping us on our shoulder and to let us know that we are not alone. As in the first reading today from the prophet Isaiah, the Lord has forsaken me, my Lord has forgotten me. But in the end, what does the Lord say? I will never forget you. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. In all humility, I will be a sheep. I will follow that voice. Because I know in that voice is my salvation. I know that in that voice is my redemption. And in my faith, I am promised, as you are promised, that as long as you stay faithful unto the Lord, you are given the blessings of God. You're given eternal life. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, in a couple of days, we will begin that 40-day fast in our own wilderness. Jesus, following his baptism, we read, was led into the wilderness. They say that when man climbs a mountain, he goes to seek God and learn from God, as in the case of Moses. It is also said that when man goes into the wilderness, he finds himself or herself. And so as we go into the wilderness, may we see God and in knowing ourselves, we realize how precious God has given us all the gifts that we need. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be praised now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God.
brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the of His Holy Church. Amen. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. You provide all that we need. Grant that we, who offer you this oblation, may experience a foretaste of your glory. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus. Christ our Lord and Savior. You who give us the season of anticipation that takes us from the joy of your incarnation to the penitential mood of fasting and contemplation. In your passion, we prepare ourselves to abstain from worldly trappings Open our hearts and minds to a spirit of true contrition and of loving reverence to you. Therefore, we join this day with the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In our prayers, may we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry and the homeless, all those who are suffering from sicknesses and illnesses. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers. In our prayers, may we pray for all abused and neglected children, as well as all abused and neglected animals and all victims of violence both here and abroad. May we pray for peace. Peace for the people of Ukraine and other places around our world. May we pray for those who suffered and lost dear ones in the recent earthquake in Turkey and Syria. May we give God our thanks this day for all those who serve in our armed forces both here and abroad. And Lord, may we pray and remember all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own for their hope salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you the living eternal and true God we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary 
the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries, in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, O Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and man the host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, 
bless and freely give us all these good things. Through Him, with Him, in Him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching uh, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. present and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and vouchsafe to grant it peace and unity according to your holy will who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not because for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us a living faith, fervent, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord. I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Lord, what we have received unto our lips, may we receive mentally. 
May this temporal gift become to us an everlasting healing. Be firm and steadfast. Do not fear nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, O Lord our God. When fear threatens us and doubts worry us, be our refuge and our strength. Grant us courage through this Holy Communion to follow your Son wherever he may lead. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. of our worship be pleasing to you most holy trinity grant that the sacrifice which i the one worthy have offered up in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom i have offered it through christ our lord amen may the almighty and merciful god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And may we pray for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, our loved ones, in our families, our friends, and our neighbors, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.